Hammers Gym YouTube channel. I'm sitting here with Nick Hammers, owner of the Hammers Gym. Nick, nice to have you here. Nice that you will answer all our questions today. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, yeah, working. I did some sparring today, as you can see. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm always here, so part of my day. All right. Um, Nick, we made an interview with Marat about his career and training with the Hammers family. We talked as well about his change from Glory to 1FC. What kind of fighter is Marat for you and what makes him special? Um, Marat is the kind of fighter that, that you, can, um, you can put a lot of information in him and um, he will show it in his fight. So the things that we train, he, it comes out in the fight and that's a pretty difficult thing for fighters to do because you always have a moving target in front of you and the things you train are not similar like a fight. So um, he grew a lot in the last years. So he's a guy that accepts everything and fights. He doesn't complain. Um, he has no issues. Uh, I need this or I need that. No, he just trusts me. I trust him. So we make a perfect team and he's like a, a hell of a fighter. He's, he's just a fighter, you know. Okay, um, how is your relationship between uh, you and Marat as trainer and fighter? Um, well, like I said before, he's a guy that trusts me. So he knows, um, through the years, he knows that what I say, I thought about it. Um, it's probably going to work. Of course, I, I am a trainer that likes to discuss things with my athlete. Like, do you really like this? Do you really don't like this? But he is a guy, we just work perfectly together. We're two parts of one machine and if you put it together it starts working and it doesn't stop. So and besides of that he's also a very good friend of mine. We, we have a really good bond. So, You won three belts together in big organizations um, which is a great achievement for your gym and for you as a trainer as well. Is there a special moment with Marat you like to remember when you think about the success from him? Um, there is a lot of moments um, with me and Marat that we that we won or, yeah, I would say we lost, but we didn't lose a lot. Um, yeah, for me, it was very special winning the K1 tournament, of course, because the K1 is the biggest name in kickboxing for the last three decades, I think. It was very special. And, of course, when we finally beat it CD Chai um, and the judges agreed with that because we think we beat him before that. But it was, um, Marat was pretty demotivated that time because um, he also knew that they kind of fucked us with the, with the decision, in our opinion. It was close, but we still won. So he was very demotivated. Also in his fight with Christian Baia, you saw it. It's, it he wasn't, there was no fire in him. So then we finally got fight number five with Sidi Chai that everybody said, like, yeah, number five. Okay, we weren't waiting for that fight neither. But... He got motivated, he beat him, and then he was back. He was more motivated than ever. So I think beating City Chai was a big step for us again. Yeah, I can name 100 moments like this. Which belt from him is the most important for you and why? Mm, for me, the glory lightweight belt. Um, together with the K1 belt, because K1 was the biggest name, and for me the glory belt, because the 70 kilo belt was a very active division with a champion that was almost not beatable, and we beat him, and we were, became triple organization champion. So that's a thing that I think nobody did in this time, except for my brother back in the day. So for me that was very special, and was the third belt. So that victory, that the becoming champion of glory was very, very important for us. So now you spoke about glory. Um, can you tell us um, how you made together the decision to change to 1FC? Um, yes, the, um, we didn't plan it. It was not like, okay, now we're champion and we're going to leave. Um, the negotiations were not going very uh, easy. And um, I think Glory didn't respect Marat as the champion uh, um, as he deserved. Um, for me, 
be becoming the triple the triple organization champion and fighting the way he does, I think he's the number one in the world. And we didn't get that feeling. So, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we made that decision. And Marat also said, listen, I want to fight the best. I want to have every belt in the whole world. So uh, there was one left. It's one FC and they have the strongest 70 kilo division now. So he said, I want to fight to be the best. I need to beat the best. So I don't mind stepping over. And we discussed it together and we made the decision. It's not that glory was bad or whatever. We just made the decision and we felt better with signing with one. Next to Marat, um, who became world famous by winning the three belts from the biggest kickboxing organization, like you said, you created another world famous fighter in the heavyweight decision, Jamal Ben Sadik. There is no doubt that you must be a great trainer. What is your recipe for success? Um, I think being born in the family that I'm born in uh, makes a big difference. Um, because what is very special in this sport for someone else was very normal for me. Um, back in the days, my training partners were Saki, Overeem, Zimmerman, Holske, uh, Khalid Arab, Ruslan Karayev, Semi Shield. Uh, so the level that I saw every day was actually the highest level in the world. But for me, it was becoming normal. And um, besides that, um, I had so much questions for my dad and my brother every day. They get tired of me, but I, I got so much information and I like to evolve because that's what my dad taught me, keep evolving. And that's one of the reasons of my success, I think. And there are some more, but I'm not going to tell people they have to come train and they will see. <laughs> Is it difficult um, to have a successful father like Cor Hammers in the sport and a legendary brother with Ramon Dekas? It was very hard in the beginning especially when I fought myself because I didn't always train properly. So I had a very big backpack on my uh, bag because I was the son of the best trainer of the world and the brother of the best fighter in the world. Um, so I, I also had a lot of expectations when I took over the gym from them. So a lot of people were like, yeah, he's never going to make it, you know. And now, 10 years later, I'm having one of the best fighters in my gym, two or three of them. Um, we keep making more, we keep winning belts, so I think I show the whole world that I'm really part of this family and I, yeah, I keep the legacy up. So yeah, it was very difficult, but I managed to get out of it in a good way. In the last interview on our Hammers Gym YouTube channel with your father, he told us about your ideas to start to offer MMA training as well. Yeah. And you had already Mark Diakiese, who is a UFC fighter, in your gym. What are your plans? Uh, my plans are to become or are to do what we did in the past with the Golden Glory team. Uh, my dad had a lot of success with all kinds of fighters and all kinds of disciplines. Um, for example, we had Sami Shield, we had Alistair Overeem, we had Kazeka Muniz, uh, Khalid Arab, Sergei Karitonov. We had a big MMA team. So I'm planning to start uh, setting that back up with Valentine Overeem, a very big name, of course. Um, and yeah, we did. Uh, we had some tryouts. Well, tryouts. We had some MMA guys coming over. The most famous one is probably Mark Diakis, and I think he showed in his fight with Lando Venata that the style here came out properly. So uh, we know what to do. We have a uh, good history with MMA, and I want to start um, setting it back up. So we're going to do it fast, and we're going to have a real pro MMA team with guys that's going to kick ass. Okay, so. The MMA world has to be prepared, I think. Um, but it's also possible to, to come here as a fighter for a training camp, for example, and to get trained by you and to get a fight analyzed, for example. Yes, that's really possible. And like I said, we already do MMA, guys, because um, I know for myself I have a good system for MMA fighters stand up. I can, I can really teach them a lot of things. Only I lack a little bit in the grappling, so we need an assistant for that. But yeah, everybody is welcome uh, for a training camp. MMA, kickboxing, Muay Thai, we are ready for everything. We know all details in every sport. And if we don't know it all ourselves, we have a trainer that knows it. So the, the idea is to set up a complete um, package for all kinds of disciplines. All right. What would you like to say to the kickboxing and MMA world? What I would like to say is keep your head up. Don't let this corona crisis fuck our sport up. Um, keep training, keep fighting. And uh, the only thing we do is fight 
um, and if we go down, we get back up. So um, we're used to doing this. So don't let this situation in the whole world destroy our sport. It's something we're used to do. So just keep doing what we're doing and fight. Okay. Thank you for the interview. Hope to see you soon and to talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, see you. Thank you very much. Pause.